When you're looking at sound insulation requirements for windows, especially, and uh, also facade wall constructions, you will encounter measures like RW plus C or RW plus CTR. They are quite common. And it's easy to be become confused about what, which one is which and what, what does, why do we have several of them. So let's just go through this quickly. If you have these two parameters, the one is RW plus C, there's a hair on my pen, uh, plus CTR. So these are the two common ones that you'll encounter. And the basic difference you could say here, this is uh, R is reduction and C is like uh, spectrum adaptation correction terms. Like but reduction, weighted sound reduction. So you will have a decibel rating. So it's it could be for perhaps that you have 42 on, on this one. And now I'm just winging some values here. And let's say it's 38. So this could be one and the same window that we're looking at, but it has two different values. So why is this one higher and why is this one lower? Well, what this the difference between these two is the they they put the emphasis on certain frequency regions. So if you let's put it this way, if you compare a uh, starting bus or a truck or heavy traffic is low frequency noise. It's a big diesel engine that is rumbling and producing a lot of sound pressure in the low frequency range. So uh, dB here. And then if you start up a big the bu bus stop and the bus is going <laughs> when it goes on. And then you will have a, a frequency spectra that looks like this. Whereas in the other case, you might have uh, uh, on the quiet side of the building, but you have this uh, in Swedish called loftgång, you know, attic corridor or whatever. It's, I don't know, well, stairwell. Speaking humans, they don't have the low frequency content that the diesel engine of the bus or the truck has. So we, in the case of speaking persons, the spectra could be more like this instead. So the frequency content is quite different when you compare them. And then if you take RW plus C, this rating, when you calculate the RW plus C, W is weighted. So you have a bunch of th third octave bands here, and then you weigh them together into a single number quantity, a single number rating that represents the sound insulation of this. And if you put the emphasis on speech, you will have the mid to high frequency range primarily. Whereas this other one, this is, this is a way of weighting the third octave bands so that they put the emphasis more towards the lower end of the frequency spectrum, which is a good idea if you want to protect yourself against noise from trucks and buses and stuff like that. And that means that even if... Uh, if the, the content, this is from of the sound source, let's make it clear also so you have it traffic. And we call this one, oh, it's too thick. Speech. And that means that if you design a window construction so that it should be good to handle low frequency noise, usually it's going to be quite good at handling higher frequencies as well, because the fr higher frequencies have shorter wavelength and the lower frequencies have longer wavelength. And the basic rule of thumb is that the longer the wavelength, the harder it is to stop it. If you consider it on like a pier in the, in the harbor, where a big wave is coming in from the sea, if you've got a huge wave, you need a big obstacle to make it stop, whereas a small ripple it's easily stopped. And that's kind of the same thing with the high and low frequency content. It's easy to stop the high frequencies, but it's more difficult to stop the low frequencies. And that means if you have an obstacle that is good to stop low frequencies, it will also work quite well against the higher frequencies. But it does not work the other way around, because this green one, if it's good to stop the higher frequencies, low frequencies will have an easier time still getting through. And that is the reason why you will have a higher rating when you look at the RW plus C, in, in, RW plus C rating and compare it to the RW plus CTR rating. And you have to 
have to be observant and careful when you do this. If you're an architect and you're going to transform the ar- acoustician's sound requirements from their draw from our drawings and put them on on your drawings, be careful so the, so you don't mix these ones up. If you if you accidentally mix them up and you you state the requirements as RW plus CTR, well, then you're on the safe side at least because if it was supposed to be this this green one but you accidentally wrote ctr and you then the requirement is 42 ctr then you will have at least 42 rw plus c probably and you're on the safe side but if you do it the other way around so that you have the noisy side facing the traffic and you accidentally write rw plus c when it should have been rw plus ctr then you're in problem because then the, the the windows that you prescribe will have lower performance than what the acoustician had calculated, and we don't want that. So, I or we usually to avoid this problem, we can take the RW plus C and approximate an RW plus CTR value, so that we only use the RW plus CDR rating also towards the quiet side of the building. So you have the same parameter all w procedure all around the building and uh, then then the risk of error is reduced a little and that's uh, usually a good thing when you're working with engineering so in tonight's video speaking of green no wait it's not green it's gray <laughs> sorry about that um in tonight's video i'm wearing my go-to outfit with v-neck pullover and a knit tie and a little shirt here and i have some various combinations you could go with blue you could go with white and you could go with i have a uh a green pullover and i have a charcoal green pullover like this one and then a bunch of knit ties in various colors so you can create a ton of outfits with with these parameters if you only have like a blue and a white shirt and you have three colors of your tie or even two colors is enough like red I have red orange blue i have a green one as well but uh, the the red and orange and the blue ones they are very useful and then white and blue shirt and then only if you only have one pullover like the, the charcoal or maybe it's good to have two if you need to wash it at least so but uh, with those three you know it's like an infinite number of combinations so that's a very good place to start and it's like no matter which one you put pull out of your <laughs> closet it's gonna turn out quite well so i really like these ones they're good with traveling as well because they are easy to pack and put in a in a little um uh, what's it called carry-on luggage that you can bring on the plane or in the car or something like that so you can travel light and still achieve a ton of different looks so that's good see you later